Today on Laser Update, we meet storyteller and pro podcaster Roger Mirabito, who is also Executive Director of Communications at Onondaga Community College. All the more coming up next. <laughs> Good afternoon from the Kathy Hawkins studio on the OCC campus. This is Laser Update. I'm Joe Salingo. I'm Cece Solomon. It's April 11, 2022. Thanks for joining us. If you go on the OCC website, you'll see hundreds of stories and events being covered. You'd think multiple people were doing it, but what would you believe if it was one person working on it all? Roger Mirbito has made it his mission to tell the story of OCC through any way possible. And through his many years here, he's become the voice of the college. Orlando Gully has the story. His role as Executive Director of Communications, but even with such a formal job title, it doesn't do the impact Roger Mirabito has at OCC Justice. He's made it his mission to tell OCC stories and messages through any form possible to ensure that the college's core values are known. I want to say about six or seven years ago, I started doing a story on the website every Monday highlighting a student. I love meeting students and hearing their backstory about how they got here and what they want to do. Everyone has a story. Throughout the course of the year, there'll be three to four dozen stories that involve students. I build up a list of students who are doing great work throughout the course of the year, and 15 of those will wind up getting made into what we call commencement posters. After commencement, we move those posters into the uh, hallway by the president's office. And it's just a good reminder of why we're all here and motivation for why we should continue to work hard and do great work. We have a podcast here at OCC. It's called Chatting About College. We try to push a new one out every week. We started doing it about five years ago because we just think we have a great message to share with people and the different ways we can do it, the better. Roger is continuing to share the experiences at OCC every day as he looks for any new opportunities that will highlight what the campus has to hold. Being able to share OCC's story is what makes Roger proud of what he does. There really is a lot of work for just one man. Roger will continue to highlight the stories at OCC any way he can for years to come. If you want to see his work, just check out any of the stories on the OCC webcut, website or his podcast. With the semester coming to an end soon, many people are thinking about what they will be doing after their first time at OCC has finished. Jacob Lurham has, has gone around campus and asked these students what's next. I am a math and science biology major here at OCC. I'm planning to go to SU after OCC and I'm planning to pursue my bachelor's in biology. And uh, I'm also a pre-med student, so I'm, my goal is to go to upstate medical school here. My major is math and science. I'm going for civil engineering. I'm going to transfer to SU for civil engineering. I want to be an engineer. Uh, general studies, humanities. I'm going to be transferring to Oswego for either teaching or accounting. This has got me thinking a lot about what's next for me. OCC students have a bunch of different plans for what they will do after they graduate. Did you know that OCC offers a variety of sports, majors, and activities? It also stands out for its art. Located in the Whitney Building, take a look at the art of students through these hallways. Did you know that the works of area junior and senior high school students is now covering the halls of the Whitney Building in OCC? That's right, walk through all three floors of the building and discover the amazing and diverse creativity from students. Each art has earned the designation of either Gold Key, First Place, Silver Key, Second Place, or Honorable Mention. The art is now available for everyone throughout the floors of the building and will be lining the halls of Whitney until the first week of March. Find more on sunyoc.edu. I didn't know that OCC has such talented artists. I'd really love to see some more from these students' work. Exploring the art in OCC can be a great adventure. Different buildings around campus have different art. Stick around after this short break to see more Lasers Update. What was your favorite part so far, Cece? I like the art. I re I'm really interested in seeing more of what Roger Mirabito has to show us. 
Here's an event that is coming up soon. Two members of the 315 Ensemble will be at the Music Convocation on Monday the 18th in the Academic 2 Recital Hope. We'll be right back. Discover your talents and transform your life at Onondaga Community College. Onondaga's expanding campus features four residence halls, the SRC Arena, and a new state-of-the-art building for the music department. Onondaga's diverse mix of students enriches classroom discussions, fuels creativity, and prepares you to be part of a community. Visit SUNYOCC.edu and discover why more than 40,000 students call OCC their alma mater. The EMC program allowed me to learn everything that I use every day in my current career. Interviewing people for the first time I learned here. The way you act and carry yourself out in the field is very important because you're representing a company, you're representing a station. Just getting that experience here was huge because when I first started there, I saw these assignments I was getting and I realized I've done this before. It was just like a continuation from right here. We know how hard the end of the semester can be. So if you're having trouble, come on over to the Learning Center next to the cafeteria in the Gordon Student Center. We have tutors, private rooms, studying materials, and more. When you come in, just sign in at the front desk with our lovely workers. Just make sure to sign out when you're done. You can go to sunyocc.edu slash the Learning Center for more information. Explore your potential, discover your talents, and transform your life at Onondaga Community College. Onondaga's expanding campus features four residence halls, the SRC Arena, and a new state-of-the-art building for the music department. Onondaga's diverse mix of students enriches classroom discussions, fuels creativity, and prepares you to be part of a community. Visit sunyocc.edu and discover why more than 40,000 students call OCC their alma mater. With the first half of the semester over, let's see what the students plan to do over spring break. During spring break, I plan to go home to my hometown of Rochester, New York, and probably just work and catch up with my family and friends. So over spring break, um, I probably intend to just uh, chill out, stay at home, work a little extra just to gain money a little bit, uh, work towards the um, next few semesters at college, and uh, that's really all. Um, I'm going to be going to Florida with my friends. We're going to go to clubs, hang out, get wasted on the beach. You know, that's what we're doing. <laughs> well, it looks like all the students are looking forward to spring break. This is Pulse on the Campus. For Laser Focused, I'm Justin Schaefer. Welcome back to Laser Update. What did you do over the spring break, Joe? I wish I had a more thrilling story, but uh, I was couch ridden with COVID. <laughs> For OCC students who are having trouble planning for your next chapter after OCC, we have a career specialist here at OCC that can help them choose the right path. He knows a lot and will be great help for those students. A story by author Alfand. Originally from Ecuador, Carlos Roldan has been working in the hospitality industry, motivated by the inspiration of his dad who worked in the airline industry to help people. He is now a career specialist here at Onondaga Community College and follows his dream of helping students to choose the right path. One of the services that I provide in here is just to connect the students with different employers. So for that, I usually explore different uh, paths under the umbrella of the business administration program. For example, marketing, human resources, accounting, financial paths. Carlos' dedication in helping students is so deep that he even invites guests and organizes events for students to give them careers information. I'm bringing a financial representative from a, from a big company here in Syracuse who's going to deliver a presentation for our current business administration students. This is a really good platform where your students can you know, ask questions, they can interact with this representative, and uh, um, I think it's a good uh, opportunity for students to know if the financial path will be a good option for them moving forward. Advising students and helping them plan their future means a lot for Carlos. He provides guidance for those in need and hopes they will find their path after OCC. He is definitely someone that OCC stu students should go see even though they're, they plan everything. You would be surprised to see all the opportunities available to you. But that's not all. As we just saw, Carlos Roldan does for OCC students to help them plan their future. 
we can wonder what is he working on this semester to continue his task. Let's check this by Arthur Oliphant. Here at OCC, Carlos Roldan, who is giving students some input to help them planning their future, is still working on his task. For that, he continues to invite people to talk to students and gives them information. I invite a guest speaker from a recognized accounting firm here in Syracuse to talk to students about his experiences um, in college and uh, you know what skills he needs to be in that position as an accounting uh, manager. But Carlos also hosts some meetings that he creates with the business department. I show them the job outlook for different uh, paths under the business administration umbrella, like marketing, accounting, retail, um, you know, human resources, uh, major careers. We can explore different facts, you know, uh, concentration of jobs, salaries, insights, to make a good decision for a linear career in their futures. As you can see, Carlos Roldan follows his convictions and will never lose the taste and the motivation to help students to plan their future. A career specialist really is useful to have around on campus. I think I'm going to stop by right after the show. Apparently, Carlos Roldan will not give up on his task to help OCC students. It's a reminder for those in need. Carlos will be happy to help you, so don't hesitate to stop by his office at Whitney 329. Now let's get into sports. This weekend, the men's lacrosse team played against Monroe Community College and came home with a win, 22 to seven, in no small part to Logan Lovemba, who had nine saves that game. Just yesterday, the men's baseball team played against Jamestown Community College in a doubleheader, ending in close losses, four to six and zero to one. Mike Bendigo hit three in the first game while Colby Gidcom and Garrett Stuckley landed one hit in a piece in the second. Now for a look at last season's sports, more namely basketball. The men's and women's teams of OCC had fantastic seasons this year, and Tyler Fernito's got the run for us. Did you know, despite missing the 2020 to 2021 season, both OCC's men's and women's basketball teams are going to be competing for a national title. OCC's men's team posted an impressive record of 25 and three, making them a five seed in the tournament. Standout stars in the team include Latisse Faison and Jeske Lucas. As a freshman, Latisse was an All-American and Lucas earned all region honors. The women's team with a record of 24 and two will be heading into the tournament as a three seed. The record of 24 and two is very impressive and it's even more amazing when you take into account the women's team went on a 22 game winning streak. Standout it. stars on the team include Hannah Durant and Aviana Baker. Hannah being named tournament MVP and Aviana has been recruited to the all tournament team. Best of luck to both teams. Bring home the gold. Go Lasers! The basketball season might be over, but it's never too late to cheer on our teams. Keep supporting OCC Sports and keep your ear to the ground for any upcoming games to make your way out. Speaking of, here's our sports calendar for this coming week. Over this weekend, the men's lacrosse team will be playing against Nasu Community College at Wilbur Field, and women's lacrosse will be playing against Monroe Community College the same day on the same field. Good luck, Lasers. Explore your potential, discover your talents, and transform your life at Onondaga Community College. Onondaga's expanding campus features four residence halls, the SRC Arena, and a new state-of-the-art building for the music department. Onondaga's diverse mix of students enriches classroom discussions, fuels creativity, and prepares you to be part of a community. Visit SUNYOCC.edu and discover why more than 40,000 students call OCC their alma mater. One of the primary things we do here in the Office of Veterans and Military Services is, is administer the GI Bill. Five separate chapters of the GI Bill, ranging from the most popular chapter, the post 9 11 GI Bill, 100% tuition and fees. Uh, students get a $1,600 a month stipend for housing and $1,000 a year for books. GI Bill for reservists and National Guardsmen, where they're paid a monthly stipend. There's a couple other chapters as well. I kind of fell in love with the dream and the idea of someday being on the radio. It's your girl Breezy! I found out about EMC, which was an absolute game changer. EMC prepared me for my career in radio and set me up to where I am now because I learned 
So many things that I still use today. I put myself in the best possible position for myself and my career going to OCC, the EMT department. Explore your potential, discover your talents, and transform your life at Onondaga Community College. Onondaga's expanding campus features four residence halls, the SRC Arena, and a new state-of-the-art building for the music department. Onondaga's diverse mix of students enriches classroom discussions, fuels creativity, and prepares you to be part of a community. Visit SUNYOCC.edu and discover why more than 40,000 students call OCC their alma mater. Nearing the end of the semester, I decided to interview some students about their stress going towards their finals. Um, I'm making sure to take time for myself, um, still prioritize my mental health even though there's a lot of school stuff going on, but yeah, taking it one step at a time. Um, staying to myself and trying to keep everything positive and keep positive thoughts, you know, but that's it. It really is interesting to see how other students are dealing with their stress. One of the many majors OCC has to offer is hospitality management. This major is, has instructors with real world experience to teach students. Here is Emily Petoniak with an inside look of what goes on in the hospitality department. Chef Deb Schneider has had many successful restaurants in the past, but after selling her last restaurant, she came to OCC to teach the future generation of culinary artists. My favorite topic to teach um, is bakery, principles of baking. I'm a certified executive pastry chef for the American Culinary Federation and baking has always been one of my passions. My favorite part of working at OCC is watching students um, complete something, which is great. We get to see the students grow um, from the very beginning and getting out into the workforce and even helping them out in the hospitality industry. It's, it's a wonderful feeling. So Bechamel's is um, tied to the course Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is where the students learn how to develop a business plan and create a business. So they're actually running the shop themselves. We don't stand there and micromanage, so to speak. Um, they do make decisions, um, but it's a learning process as well. We sell all kinds of baked goods. Um, we also do savory items, sandwiches, salads, entrees. Um, in yesterday's class, we actually had a new piece of equipment it was a hot dog roller. We did Polish kielbasa with sauerkraut, homemade sauerkraut in the class from the class, and um, sauteed onions. So those are just unique things that we get to do. Chef Deb Schneider is dedicated to teaching her students everything they need to know and more to keep them laser focused in the real world. The hospitality management is a great hands-on major for students interested in the management of restaurants, hotels, or food service industry in general. That's not all for Chef Deb Schneider, though is it, Joe? No, it's not. The last semester of hospitality management, students will take a class called entrepreneurship. Emily Batoniak sat down with Chef Schneider once again to see what it takes for the students to run the Bechamel retail shop. After interviewing Chef Deb Schneider in the fall, I sat down with her again to get a closer look at the Bechamel's retail shop. So the students have to prepare for um, opening. They, we start out with making large batches of cookies. The students are very organized. They work well together. They have started through the program together, so they're great with communication. So we were able to get a lot done. So to give you an idea of the volume of cookie batters that we're making, our chocolate chip cookie recipe calls for four pounds of chocolate chips. So it's, it's pretty vast, it's pretty large. So they were able to make four batches of cookies in one prep day. Their prep time is so efficient, they're just, it was, it was wonderful. So we were able to open early. The opening of Bechamel went tremendous. Last week on Valentine's Day, we did a pop-up, which the students were very organized in doing. So we um, pushed our grand opening up a week. So we thought, well, these students work really well together. Um, we opened at 10.30 on time, um, and we sold out in an hour and a half. What I hope the students will take with them when they go on for entrepreneurship is a sense of, of responsibility. Um, the first question, their first homework question that is asked is, do you want to be an entrepreneur? And I, so I had asked before the homework was due, you know, does anybody want to own their own business? What do you want to do? And one um, student said, no, not really. And I said, that's okay, because if everybody was an entrepreneur, we wouldn't have any employees. Whether you do or don't, it's all about the responsibility of um, 
working for someone else and having that respect of their, their business and now you will know what it actually entails to be a business owner. In 2016, we did a curriculum change which we added the class entrepreneurship. The course went live the fall of 2017. So, um, and it's been running every semester since then. I've taught it every semester. So, um, it's been very successful as far as not just the retail shop, but as far as students going through the program. We have had a couple graduates that actually have opened up businesses, which is, to me is like the best that I can you know, think of. As the students graduate the entrepreneurship class, they have the skills that they need to be laser focused in the real world. Before the pandemic, Chef Schneider had put in a request for an expansion of Bechamel due to its popularity. This expansion would allow for the shop to be open more than just one day a week, along with longer hours. It was put on hold because of the pandemic, but Chef Schneider hopes to see the proposal come to life in the near future. Bechamel is located on the ground floor of Gordon, near the Academic 2 building. They open on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. until they sell out. Be sure to check your OCC email for any pop-ups they may do. The Oscars just happened, and Denzel Washington was nominated for Best Actor for his work in The Tragedy of Macbeth. Did you know he's actually the most nominated black actor right now, and has actually won Best Actor in 1990 and 2002, respectively. Speaking of Macbeth, the Red House Theater just finished its show of Macbeth from April 1st to 10th. The show is directed by Tamara Underwood and, and started and starred Joe Hoge, who voiced and captured King Kong on Broadway. Keep an eye out for the next show at the Red House Theater, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, which will be showing from June 10th to 19th. See theredhouse.org for more information. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected everyone, but not everyone has coped with it the same way. Here's Vincent Tran to talk about how people have been using social video games to stay connected. Humans are constantly trying to interact with another person in any way possible. We have a need to stay connected. This was made deafeningly obvious as the pandemic hit and people were isolated in their homes. We immediately turned to the next best way to connect with people, video games. Immediately, a game that no one had their eye on caught the attention of the world, Among Us. A game that forced you to talk with people and socially de deduce who might be an imposter. That was the only the start, though. People raced to buy new gaming consoles and high-end PC parts to make sure they were equipped to play new video games with their friends, which led to a sh shortage of supplies and a scalping of prices. Even during the two-year mark of the pandemic, video games are even more popular than when they started. People are still not finding the social interaction they were used to before everything changed. You can see that the social interaction is being more and more pursued as massively multiplayer games become more populated. Just recently, Final Fantasy XIV, a popular game, had its server completely clogged for months as players were scrambling to experience its new expansion and all of the players that came with it. I would know. I was one of them. People were willing to wait for up to six hours just to get into the video game, sometimes leaving the queue open the entire time they were at work so that they could come home to it. Video games, for the time being, seems to be the best way to have a social connection when you can't interact with the people around you the same way as you did before. Joe, isn't it crazy to think how even video games have been affected by the pandemic? Yeah, it really is crazy to think about how much it's affected every part of our lives. Waiting that many hours to play a game is just ridiculous to me, but Vincent Tran has shown how important interaction is to us, and what better way to stay connected with your friends than online when you can't see each other. Last time Orlando Gully covered the work Roger Mirabito does at OCC to cover this college's stories, one of those ways was Roger's podcast, where he chats with special individuals at OCC to recognize them. Orlando took a deep dive into one of these podcasts recently to see exactly what they're like and what people Roger covers. In 2022, Roger Mirabito's podcast, Chatting About College, recently highlighted a standout faculty here at OCC. Someone whose mark on the audio world has left them with a Grammy nomination. So we recently recorded a podcast with an amazing faculty member here, Shane Patterson. Shane graduated from Baldwinsville, went to New York University, and then came back home to the central New York area. And he is just a wizard at this whole sound recording thing. 
my parents were in a band before I was around. And uh, growing up, they had all their old like sound gear, which kind of like laying around the house. And so I just kind of, you know, take pieces of it and plug things into other things and see what happened. From there, Shane would use any opportunity to use the equipment or watch others. He would eventually start recording his friend's band, and from there on out, he just kept improving. Shane started teaching here in the fall of 2021. He teaches in the sound recording degree program, uh, and he was brought in by Tony Vidala, a professor in the broadcast media communications degree program. Shane teaches four different classes with Tony on sound recording and live sound to give students an in-depth, hands-on experience. Really try in those two years that we have, four semesters of class, to give them as much of knowledge about the audio industry and about working with audio as we possibly can. And Shane's story on how he recorded this uh, vocals, which is part of a Grammy-nominated album, is pretty cool. There was an actress in town filming something at American High in Liverpool, and she was the um, lead actress or voice in the animated Disney film Moana back in 2016. Shane orchestrated all that, the whole recording, all the communication, all that kind of thing. Shane's impact on the world of audio is now being represented through this album that now has a chance to win a Grammy, something that he is very proud of. It's a really cool project um, and really just really cool to be involved on something like that. On the first Sunday in April, uh, Shane and the rest of us will find out if he's part of a, a Grammy winning project. Roger will continue to highlight these special individuals at OCC whether they're a student, professor, or anyone who stands out on campus, just like Shane. If you want to check out Roger's podcast, Chatting About College, you can look it up on the OCC website, or you can listen to it on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you download podcasts from. I think I'm interested in tuning in myself. That's all for this episode of Laser Update. Thanks for tuning in and seeing what our amazing students and staff have been up to this past year.